What up guys, welcome to another episode of Nerdy Dating. AP is back on this episode. Today we're talking about traditional versus modern day dating. And let's open it up with the first thing. What is traditional dating? AP, what are your thoughts on traditional dating? What do you think it is? Uh, traditional dating is like courting, uh, taking taking the girl out, showing up, asking her parents for permission to go out with her. Um, actually being that like physical attraction, act on that physical attraction, you know? Uh, that's my idea of traditional dating, as far as the sense of starting traditional. Starting traditionally, yeah. And traditional dating is, is that like because I had, for this episode I did a lot of research on because I just want to like make sure because what, what our thought of traditional dating is, which is the guy approach a girl, the guy pays for every drink, the, the guy pays for every dinner, the guy does this, the guy does that, the girl doesn't really do anything. It's like almost she gets the princess treatment, but also traditional dating you don't use any online tools you don't use anything else you literally just date within your area which it it could like meet somebody in person is a good thing that's not sure that's a bad thing but traditionally, like traditionally i think that's traditional like i think traditional was like that though because they didn't even have the option of social, social dating. media yeah yes. you couldn't you couldn't even do the do a modern style of dating back then because it was phone line and you even had seven people on the phone at the same time as you were if if you tried to at least call your call your own night, hey Jessica, just seeing you want to go to <laughs> this dude's taking Jessica to the <laughs> right. We're, so we're all like, on the what, phone. Why are you doing what, Jim? Get off the phone, Jim. Jim, right. God dang it! Hey man, yeah, I was just having to be here. Y'all just picked yeah. up first. I was already on the phone. I what you mean, already on the phone? Yeah. Like, but then another thing I saw when it came to traditional days, somebody's like, you have to wait three days to talk to your talk to that person again. Like you don't contact the person right after the date, let them know like, hey, how's it going? You wait the three day period because back then. They didn't have access to phones in their hands 24-7. Like, Accessibility changed, yep. People, I think people romanticize traditional dating. In reality, I think we, what we need to do is to make traditional, not, what's the word I'm looking for? Not transform, but bring in tradition to modern dating. Use the foundation of traditional dating with modern dating to be more, you know, better at dating. I think a lot of people get too focused on like, well, if they didn't meet me at Walmart or the coffee shop at a bookstore at, you know, the museum while I was walking by, that it wasn't meant to be. You have to curate your own dating. Like people are not just going to want, thanks to the pandemic, people are not approaching people as much anymore. Thanks to, you know, TikTok and people being afraid to be considered creepy, guys are not approaching women as much anymore, which is a very sad thing. So therefore, guys, if the guy sees an attractive girl, the likelihood of him approaching her is very unlikely. Like the last, I can remember the last time I approached a girl, and that was it was in October of last year. It was at the art festival, art fair at the plaza. I think I approached a girl at a bar, like, and my friend was like, hey, "Let's go upstairs." And I was like, "No, I'm gonna talk to this girl real quick." I ended up talking to her. But my friend wanted to go upstairs. I ended up following him upstairs. But I, like, I went out and approached her. I was like, "Hey, how's it going? How's your night?" Kind of thing. And um, the reason why, cause like she just said, like I was sitting, standing right next to her, looked over. She was attractive, but her friend was talking to some dude, so she was just sitting there, like, mm -hmm. "I'm third willing right now." And I was like, "Hey, how's it going?" Like I just opened up a conversation, going to get her company too, cause I thought she was attractive. When's the last time you approached a girl? Do you? Even I approached. I, I think I always and I always have to do the approaching. Um, I'm just, I'm just, that's just my style. Yeah. Uh, if a girl approaches me, then, you know, that's even, I've, I've had girls approach me, you know, it's not yeah. like, um, but like, I think the last time, my my last approach was through uh, an app. But in person, know? like last time in person. Last time in person. Man. See? You know, like. <laughs> this is a demo right here. Two guys who are like, we don't approach women in person more. Not because one, we we don't want to. Just that, well, like it just. My my thing with my thing with approaching women in person, like when I'm going to the store, I'm not going to approach you. Right. You have to like really. There's a certain standard depending on the environment of where I'm entering on if I will approach you. You right. know. Um. Am I going to, uh, the club? Like when I'm at the club, my standard of approaching you. And chances of approaching you are different versus if I'm going like one. I don't. I don't go to bookstores. That's not. Right. That's not my thing. So, um, if I'm going to Kroger's or Safe Safe Food or whatever, um, if I'm going to any food place 
or a fast food place, I'm not going to approach you. Most likely because you're probably in your own set of doing things and my chances of getting a no is a way higher standard. You know, sure. like, think about it. Like female wise, if I'm going to go, if I'm going to Starbucks to get a coffee, um, what standard of man am I wanting to come in and, you know, talk to me? Like, right. But the likelihood of finding somebody who's a better person to speak to is going to be in those places. The Starbucks, the grocery store versus the club. Like the higher standard of person. You think? I definitely think because you have somebody who, one, their daily life, they're not there to, to flaunt and show out. If somebody's natural beauty is in Walmart. Like I'm walking in Walmart and I see somebody who's naturally like just, okay, she's not putting on makeup. She's not trying to stuff for anybody. And we both had to bump into each other and have a conversation. I'll be more likely to talk to her than the girl I met at the club who I know for a fact is like, I'm here to show out where the, you know, the guy with all the money is, something like that. Right. Like, but I mean, about, that's, a, I think that's a mindset. It is. Those are, those are, yeah. But flip this back to back in the days in the seventies and eighties and nineties. People were beating people in grocery stores. Like you're, cause there's no other place. Like you right. didn't meet people online. You didn't have it, the social media to talk to somebody. So how to talk to somebody when you go out and about, that's where you're going to talk to somebody. You're waiting in the grocery store line. The person next to you is going to say something like, man, this line is ridiculous. Oh man, you're right, man. Like you come here all the time. Like those yeah. conversations are more happening yeah. more, not organically, but I guess you can say that because you're in a situation with somebody where like you guys are both in that environment. In that environment versus yeah. now you go to the grocery store, Sit in line with somebody and look at just looking like don't go to the self checkout. That's another self checkout makes it easier too. But don't go to the self checkout. Go to the actual line and just sit and look like while you're waiting, look back and see if anybody's on their phone. Look back and see if anybody's you know texting somebody. Most likely people are looking down on their phone. They're not looking up around mm -hmm. to have that character to bump into somebody. But back then. Grocery store, the deli, whatever place you went, you most likely going to talk to somebody. You're more likely to talk to anybody of any gender because the fact that human interaction wasn't yeah. through your phone. You're, yeah, human interaction is way limited now. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you don't, you don't have. And yeah, I mean, COVID, COVID added to it, but human, yeah. hu human interaction was already depleting. Uh, when COVID kicked in, it just activated the tipper of like, yeah, no more, um, no more in person, no more. Touching no more hand to hand, you know, right. like it was it was just that type of thing. Um, modern, like I think traditionally, uh, I guess in all ways, it's it's organic just because like, you know, there's there's those people you glance at and they're like, you know, oh, man, I just got to have her like, you know, so traditionally you were meeting people in schools, right. your, your neighborhoods, your job, the areas church, you were, yeah, yes. the areas you were at, you know, that's, that's how it was. Um, and I think like even modernly, that's, that's a thing that still happens, right? Yeah. Because yeah. attraction's going to occur, mm -hmm. you know, pe put people in a, put people in a circle, attraction's going to occur amongst one to five, Yes. you know, every, every, every one to five attraction will occur. And it's just, it's just how it goes. So, um, like. I think it was it was a thing back then. It was um, more of a thing back then to be standard of being being married. You know, it had more of a honor and a more to it. Um, but now, like tr modernly today, um, it doesn't matter if you're married or not. It's, right. It's are you happy? Right. You know, like you can ask that question more now. Um, versus traditionally, you weren't you weren't really asking, "Are you happy?" happy yeah. You were you were just dating. You were yeah. just you know. It is what it is. Thing. Next yeah. step to the goal post, the next goal line, next part of the train. Yep. Yep. We're going to the next station. We're just okay. We've been in person. All right, we probably see each other once a week. Probably see each other once. You know, we hear from each other once every two weeks, something like that. Oh, see each other again. Next step. All right, so relationship. Okay, next step. All right, um, marriage. Okay, next step, moving together. Oh, kids, and then stuff like that. Versus now. What y'all talk about? I think taking the divorce rate on that because we, our generation, has seen our parents go through it and seeing like where our parents look like not being in a happy relationship and stuff like that. We're like, yep. I don't want to experience that. I don't want to put my kids. Or I want to put my future kids to that or my kids to that. I don't want to do that. That's not where I'm going to go down that route. So I'm gonna be more choosy. Which let's talk about modern day dating, which is modern online. day dating allows you to be more choosy. Yes, it does. Like it gives you, it gives you that. Uh, preference ability, like even on your apps, you get mm -hmm. a preference of what you want to see. It limits, you have more to see, so it limits what you what you see. You know, right. uh, traditionally you didn't have a lot to see. Right. Traditionally you you could see everything to your scope of location. 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 Where yeah. 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 Like 
you had maybe the ten suitors that you can talk to, and that was the ten that you yeah. one of the ten you chose. You did not choose like, well, I got these ten here in this. Let's say Grandview. Okay, I don't feel like driving all the way to North Kansas City, but now it's like, well, actually. Talk to my North Kansas City just off the app. I can go drive and meet her. We yeah. meet somewhere lo yeah. locally, go on a date kind of thing, which um, modern day dating includes online dating, includes the dating apps, and includes social media. And I think what people don't do right when it comes to modern day dating, why people say modern dating sucks, is because they don't use social media and, and dating apps as a tool. It's not it's not the end all be all. You still have to do traditional dating Tradi yeah, stuff. Yeah, I say they don't interact the traditional stuff with it. Yeah. And like like you said uh, a little bit ago when you were like, you know, traditionally you would talk to somebody and not call them again for three days, mm -hmm. you know, like, I think that's, that's like, thinking about it now, it's just like, nah, man, you get in trouble with that. Oh, yeah, right? no, 100%, because your phone yeah. is with you all the time. Yeah, so, you, you that, get in contact them for three days, well, right. they might have, like, depending on how soon you guys started talking or how you interacted, there might be somebody different in those three days, or mm -hmm. they might have just forgot about you and... Most likely, most women want you to contact them every day. Right. And cool. Also, our phones are right here. Like, our phones yeah. are in our pocket. Back then, like, back in with the court, let's say Corliss phone, you didn't have a, like, you had a pager walking down the ballot. You didn't have your phone, you know, on your on your person all right. the time. So, when you got home, okay, they reach out to her, but the Corliss phone's taking up here, the internet's working, so I can't speak on it, I just call her tomorrow. Like, now you're like, what's your excuse? <laughs> like, you know, you can't say, I just like, didn't, like, cause I, you can't say I didn't want to. Yeah. And that's like, that's okay. me personally. Like I'm, I'm that type of person. Like if I, if I reach out to you, I might text you. I might not personally, I, I'm a, I'm a gamer, you know, yeah. personally I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I work, I'm busy. My hands are like, if, if I'm sitting still and not moving my hands, I'm losing money. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm one of those that, you know, I can make money while moving and I can make things happen. So I do. So. If if you're a female and you you want to be in my life like as a, as my as my wife, then you have to be willing to like accept and enjoy the time you get versus the time you don't. You know, right? Because that's how money works. And another thing to add to it though, like the whole texting there, talking there, like you don't have anything to say. There's nothing new to say that you did five minutes ago. You're, yeah. like, there's nothing new to add to that. So I think it is good to have that break. But like the three day thing. Is they didn't have they didn't have cell phones on. Now we have but cell it's phones not, on us. And it's not good to be in your phone every day. It's though. not. And it's, and so like, you know, me me texting a girl, it's like, you know, I'm not gonna text you for five hours straight a day. I'm not gonna text you for two hours straight a day. You know, I'm gonna do like two, three, four, five texts back, you know, back and forth, little chats, and then I'm gonna put my phone down. You know, right. I'm I'm gonna put my phone down because But that, that's in a sense kind of more traditional way where you're not being the Traditionally, glued to the phone. So, but if the time frame instead of three days, you're paying maybe a few hours. But with modern dating, though, to bring it back to modern dating, we, I think people look at it like, oh, it's not organic. It's not organic to meet somebody on a dating app. It's not organic to meet somebody here. You're curating it. But, but how is that not? You're, I mean, you're not curating it though. You you set your preferences, but yeah. how's it not organic? That's what people will say though, because it's like you're not meeting a person in the wild. You're not meeting them in person versus uh, looking at it as. This is your chance to narrow down that maybe that person you meet in the wild might be a jerk. So you just you know you can still meet jerks on dating apps, but you can weed them out a lot faster. And then from there, that guy, because most women are not gonna do this, that guy still has to ask you out. Even the woman makes the first move, because dating app, a woman can make the first move. She can say hello, hi. Right. But it still takes the guy to be traditional in a sense and say, hey, you wanna go bowling, you wanna go to the movies, which is a horrible first date. But you wanna go to the amusement park, you wanna go to, you know. A restaurant, you want to go to the lounge, you want to do something like the guy still has to make that first move. If he's not making that first move, the girl's gonna sit there because unless she's super into him, she's not gonna make that first move. Like, as far as like, hey, me and my friends, she might do the invite where me and my friends are out doing something, depending on what they want. Like, we're casual, me and my friends are out at the bar, want to come out with us? Sure, I might come hang out. But the guy is more, nine times out of ten, we'll have to make the first initial in-person meeting yeah which is still a traditional thing just online dating is used in a sense to clear out some of the the stuff you do not want you get the, the obstacles yeah the yeah. obstacles online dating helps you bypass a lot of obstacles that um you know makes it more convenient for dating to exist so that's 
in a, in a sense, modern dating has its big cons. Like uh, the sense of when when you're modernly dating now, um, you're dating and your the person you're dating may be dating others, and that that option and possibility exists way stronger now too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so much in a sense that it's joked about in in social medias and stuff, and that's where the cons of modern dating come True. in because social media. While social media can be a tool for dating, there's the other aspects of social media that can bend that whole reality. sense of yeah, dating. Like that that whole reality on this social media is fake. Right. Versus what the traditional thing was is like the what you saw of that person and what you know of that person interacting and, and is traditional. It's mm -hmm. everything is all in front of you. That's all that ever is is in front of you. You know, the, in, in front of you can still be a live facade in the back. Yeah, you can't, yeah. You can still do the same facade. You do the same facade on social media. It just looks more like, oh my gosh, everything's perfect. This person's an ultimate bachelor in reality. Yeah. Like, this dude is by himself 90% of the time, not doing anything. But on social media, you make it look like, oh, he's a girl on his shoulder every week. He's a girl on his shoulder every week. Right. In reality, he's not getting out like that. And same thing with the girl. She's like, oh, she got a new boo right here. She got a new boo right there. But that boo is just some dude that during the talking stage, they're not in a committed relationship. Right. So therefore, she's heartbroken because the dude didn't want to commit to her. And she's like, I don't understand what's wrong with me when there's nothing wrong with you. It's just the pool of people you're picking is not the best pool. With that option, like earlier I mentioned the house uh, analogy. So follow me on this, guys. Back then, let's say in the 80s and 90s, you had five houses to choose from. You had a house that had like nothing in it. You had a house that had like maybe something you like, maybe HGTV kind of style, maybe a house that had gaming stuff, a house that has like more cooking oriented, a house that's more like plant and flower like. And like you know what house you're gonna pick out of five houses, you're gonna make a choice. You make one choice of the house. You're like, okay, I'm gonna go with the house with the gaming for me or the house with the HGTV stuff. Now you might have those five houses plus another 20 houses that have a little bit of everything you're like oh shoot well that house has this anime in gaming this house has HETV mixed with cooking this house has that oh no this house has the you know the cars and the everything this house has the the full dress and the, and the hot cup of jacuzzi i don't know which house i want and then you sit there and you're like i guess i won't move my place i'm just gonna stay here because the options out there are much much more broader but here's the thing you gotta find a house that's perfect for you that's the beauty of modern day dating is that you're not trapped within your area. You have the opportunity to reach out and find somebody that's perfect for you. Find that house that is perfect for you. Not all houses are going to be perfect, but there's going to be one that matches you. And you don't need to find a perfect person. You just need to find a perfect a person that is perfect for you. Like that, I keep saying that because people are like, oh, I gotta find perfection. There's perfection doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But the person that's most compatible with you, that has the most chemistry with you, that has the same like um, sex drive or similar sex drive to you, similar interests, similar um, goals and interests. Yes, interest does count because I think lifestyle, yeah, lifestyle, similar lifestyle, similar goals, dreams. That stuff or ideals matters. That stuff matters. How that person treats other people, that matters. So you need to find a person that's perfect for you. You're, if you're somebody who's into country music and, you know, rodeo and NASCAR, you talk to somebody who's into, you know, who's anti-country, like, I don't deal with country at all. Back then, you might be like, well, he doesn't like country. I guess I'll just, you know, tolerate versus like, okay, this dude really hates country. I don't know why, but he really hates it. I might find a guy who's more into country music. You don't have to be 100% into right, it, but right. at least somebody who enjoys the thing I like and won't crap on the things that I love. Yeah. That's back then, like you, the person you were dating or talking to didn't like the things you didn't love. You was like, well, what are my other options? Yeah, yeah. And don't, like you get stuck in a relationship where you're down to marriage where you're like, well, we don't, they don't value the things I'm into, but I don't want to break up because we have this kid here, we got this, like all of these other factor plays into it down the line back in a traditional relationship versus now you can get, you can get ahead of that by saying like, but see, so that, that brings to like when people say now, um, you know, they say, if you, if you go on social media now, they'll say, uh, I hate modern dating or I hate the new generation of dating. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just because back then, yeah, was it was it settling or was was it more acceptable to be like, you know, yeah, they hate country, but I don't I don't have to listen to it. You know, right. like and is that wrong of you to abstract country when when in, when in the presence of your other, you know, like. Right. Or is that just something that it's acceptable to tolerate? And I, I think it's more so like if that's your passion, 
and your passion like that drives you and you're like I love this so much and I want to geek out about this and you yeah, see the others yeah. like it's like I hate when you talk about this I can't stand it like you could like back then like well I guess I'll just stay in it I guess there's nothing else there's nothing else out there there's no other options versus now you're like yeah this is month four and you really hate the things I really enjoy doing I'm not sticking around for this. Yeah, right. yeah, you might make a bunch of money. Yeah, you might provide for the house. Yeah, you might do all this, but my mental health is, and that's the thing we talk more about mental health today. Your mental health is more important than staying in somebody just for the title or staying with somebody just for the sake of we're in a relationship. You're just dating the, the title versus dating the person. And I think that's one thing with people with modern day dating is like, well, I gotta get a go. I gotta get married by this point. I gotta do this by this point. And none of the guys out there meet me or none of the girls out there meet me what I'm looking for. And you're like, Slow down. Date the person. Why are you dating the title? Why why are you trying to get to this goal line? Because that's, that's the goal line at the end of the day doesn't really matter. Doesn't. At the end at the end of the day, whether you guys are husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, um, or just, you know, I'm gonna say or just best friends, mm -hmm. but so in this sense, right? Like, regardless of what the title is, the the passion is there the the relationship the friendship the loyalty and love between the uh, one another is there that's why the title doesn't matter at the end of the day so like if you guys were to you know as as ali said a minute ago you know five houses if you find the house that you like right and it's perfect for you um if you go to buy that house and you know like when you go to when you go to buy a house uh you can buy it and you and your wife sign and put the title on it right mm -hmm. but only the loan or uh, only the loan to get the money for the house is in one person's name okay right? so you can in that sense you know the title doesn't matter you guys are together so if if i go in and this is this is my house that i'm buying mm -hmm. you know now come and stay in this house with me this is our house right it is all one house you know regardless of if we are married, husband and wife, or boyfriend and girlfriend, this is all one house, mm -hmm. and that's that's just how it's supposed to. That's how it's supposed to be traditionally. And you know, to add to that, because I don't want people to get confused by saying like, "Well, he just said labels don't matter." No, no, labels make sure you have communication, make sure you have barriers. But as far as finding that person, you shouldn't be in that. You shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody you're not truly appreciative or who doesn't appreciate you just for the fact that you have the label. The label, right? So that's something that you need to keep in mind. And what's a fix for modern day dating? I think it's the approach. I think people approach it in a sense where we're like, there's too much out here, I'm getting overwhelmed, versus maybe you can narrow it down your limit of people, because dating apps allow you to limit it from like a mile to 20 miles. Narrow that down if you want to find somebody, but then you can use that to meet somebody. But you also got to keep in mind that traditional stuff still matter. Do they treat people right? Are they willing to uh, take you out? Are they willing to, like, I don't like the word invest in your time, but are they willing to treat you just as a human? Treat you like a, a good person, like just treat you as a person. Are they I willing think, to do that? I think like an important thing to keep in mind for a fix of modern dating is that, you know, you are both two different people. Mm -hmm. While at the same time you have similar interests, you are two different people and it's okay to let them live a different life. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have to live your life even though they are in your life. That's, that's like, I think a big thing that will help fix modern dating because a big thing that you see happen is that people want to be attached to the hip of one another um, or like one of them wants to be that way at least and if if one person's not continuously communicative in that sense as well then it can create an issue or because like you can be communicative on social media but not communicative in, in a sense person. of person you're sharing memes but you're not texting me talking about your day. Like, right. well, I'm clicking the share button and I'm not texting, you know? Right. That's that's a difference too. So I think modern modern dating has a lot of a lot of hoops and points where we can be like, well, that'll fix it, that'll fix it, versus traditional dating. We didn't have any any reason to fix anything. Mm -hmm. People it wasn't it wasn't fix it, it was tolerate. Right. But now modern dating is uh, not fixable. Uh, in a sense of there's too many it's, but it's, mindset or holes. Yeah, too, to many, too, too many options, which that's going to happen. The more, the more the world grows, the more we get connected to each other, you're going to have more options. But it's, once again, finding that 
person that you're not just tolerating them. You generally want to be in their presence. They are your best friend. You guys love each other. You guys enjoy each other's company. You guys go do your separate things and then come back to each other at the end of the day. Like, you have the yeah. opportunity yeah. to find that versus just saying, well, I guess we're just here, right? Yeah, we're just here. Okay. And it's in... You know, like there's there's cute things you do tr that are still kind of traditional, right? Like getting matching tattoos. You know, th those kind of things mean the same thing as a wedding ring. I don't go that far. You go get a matching tattoo with a girl, and you gonna tell me that's not the same thing as a wedding ring? Nah, cause I can go erase that. I can go erase that. Matching if you tattoo. go erase it, yeah, then, then you don't have it any longer. Yeah, like I wouldn't go that far because people do that. Like wedding, a wedding ring to me is more of a commitment. Cause you, either it's, way, it's, it's, they're both a commitment. commitment. But like one is more one you think about one's in blood. Yeah, but it's because in blood, like people and families kill each other, man. Like that's I mean, <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna get dark here. But like, <laughs> but but you think about it though, like a wedding, you get a wedding wing, you got people you coming over, everybody coming to watch, like not everybody coming to that tattoo party. I'm like let's go. I'm like no, people are at the wedding sitting there watching these people go down an aisle. They're making vows in front of everybody. Yeah. The only thing with the tattoos, like you and that tattoo party, like the the artist, like oh yeah, I want this, huh? Okay. Oh my bad, babe. Look, this is, oh my god, yeah, you know this is awesome, you know. You know, and that's it. Like versus like the actual wedding where like there's people there, people are witnessing this. You got family involved. You got people coming over, traveling all over town. This big old hoodoo. It's a more bigger deal. Like a tattoo. I go get tattooed with somebody. Don't mean anything. And they like, oh, this means something. Oh yeah, you know it means something, babe. Get tattooed. Next thing I'm like, four months from now. What happened to what's the color? I know, just know we didn't work out. We're we, we gonna do that tattoo. I'm probably gonna add a little more, like, you know, design, probably for more clouds to this and keep moving. Like, some. Versus, you no. Know, but in the way, I, the way I look at it, right, is if I'm taking the time, it's, it's commitment. Yeah. All, all in all, it's commitment and time. If I'm taking the time to go in and it's not it's not the same as, like, uh, we bought we bought matching shirts. Yeah. You know, like, we, we, paid to, we paid to get our skin engraved. You know, with that person, like the the name tattoo standards, not not just like a picture. We got matching rainbows, like yeah. nah, that that's whatever. If if we get tattooed names, you know, like or or even like tattooed rings, yeah. you know, that it kind of it kind of brings the same standard to it. That's what I was saying in a sense. Not I wouldn't say all matching tattoos. I'm just gonna say that there's still there's still ways to have. That whole aspect of being husband and wife without husband and wife existing, mm. and they're still like because weddings. I think I, I'm telling you, you're gonna start seeing it. But weddings are the traditional standard, yeah. So it's gonna become a more modern thing of people being together and having just went to court and yeah. signed papers. Yeah, but still that's still considered marriage. Like you're, you're getting signature documents. I mean, I'm not saying the tattoo absolves from marriage type yeah. thing. Like I'm just saying. It's it's other ways to be married without the the court doc that says it, and that's that's another thing. Like, and even the court doc after like ten years in certain states, common laws marry you. So yeah, you yeah. know. So it's it's that's why I'm like. But common law, it's like you say, common law marriage. That person still go around and do stuff behind that person's back. Granted, they marriage, can, marriage but, is still the same thing. But like, but I think it's, the thing can happen in marriage, but that's label. Yes. If you, if you think about it, like marriage, marriage is a label. You yes. know. Um, in the whole aspect, you're supposed to be happy with one another, and that's what will keep you guys together and making it work. And like, work, right, work on like when times are tough, be there for each other. Yes, right, right. Marriage label, but that tattoo, because like, there's friends who get tat matching tattoos together too. I wouldn't say that's the same commitment as somebody. It's a tie. I mean, it's, it's not the same commitment as somebody in a yeah. you know marriage. So that's, yeah. why, that's why I'm like, like I wouldn't go that far to say. I know what you're trying to go with that. I just wouldn't say that would be the the same level of intimacy because at the end of the day like Undertaker he had Sarah tat on his neck for like five years what happened to Sarah she broke up with him what happened to Undertaker tattoo it slowly decreased and it became like chains it was weird <laughs> he didn't have Michelle there he's been married to Michelle for years <laughs> But no, I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going with that. All right, let's go ahead and watch some TikTok videos here for, cause we got some videos to talk about. <laughs> All right, guys, we're we'll gonna go do some TikTok videos here. So let's see, volume up, and here's the first one. This is from Miss Rikisha, or Riska, and 
open. Here we go. And some of them do. Listen to this. And you know, that's what trips me out. It's like, we say women got the unrealistic expectations, and some of them do. But ain't nobody got more unicorn, fairy tale, door to explore expectations of the opposite sex than us men. Again, some women do expect a man to be six feet tall and make six figures and have a six pack abs, and that's unrealistic for most men. But I know like 10 dudes already that fit into that category. All you gotta do is have a good job and some good genetics, and you're straight. But look at us. Like, how, how, what do we expect of a woman? She gotta be a virgin, but she gotta be a freak. She gotta pay half the bills. But she got to do 100% of the cleaning, the cooking, the child raising. She got to be exhausted from all of that. You know, all the cooking and washing and cleaning and all that good stuff. And still be horny enough to meet our sexual needs. And get a good night's rest. But also wake up in the middle of the night in case we want some head and a turkey sandwich. That ain't it. She also got to give birth to all our babies. Because, you know, we, we got to have that legacy. But then she can't have no stretch marks. And she got to lose that baby weight in 30 days or less. And, and then she got to do it while fighting postpartum depression by herself because we're going to tell her she having an attitude or something like that because all we're thinking about is we ain't got no vagina in the last six weeks that she got to take the heel. That ain't it. Then she can get older, but she can't look older. Otherwise, we're going to say that she's falling off. Like, the list goes on, but just tell me something. How many women do you know that fit into that category? None. So who really got the unrealistic expectations? See, but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a unicorn because I'm one of those. It's like I don't have that expectation. Yeah. Like, and speaking from a freak, speaking from a married and father aspect, you know, like uh, I got married and my my wife um, had had the idea of you know you you're not gonna like the baby fat, and I'm one of those that is like, shoot, I made the body, like. That's a body I sculpted now, you know, because I gave you the baby, if you think about it. So I don't have a problem with the baby, baby stretch marks, whatever, all that. I made it. You know, we we made that. That's a that's a bond type thing. Like, so I don't that these TikToks is part of why modern dating is so bad. Right. Because social media gives you gives you these aspects of this is what men think. Right. And they just automatic women think that men fall into that category right. and believe so but they, that's a that right there that because i don't believe that either i don't believe what he said as far yeah, as like see? like one like to me i said body count doesn't body count does not matter to me because in different guys will say differently different guys be like no no she can't have more than 10. Well, okay dude well you know i want somebody who is a sexual freak just saying like i want somebody to like woo. <laughs> you know what i'm saying right. but to me body count don't matter and sex is not something just you're not you're not born good at sex. You have to learn how to be good at sex. You with can, that person. Like, you know, you, you can be with that person, but also, I, also, from my experience, one, also get STD checks every six, three to six months, so stay clean. Yes. But to add to that, like, oh, I've yeah. I've learned different things from different women just because I've, like, just not even because I've been, I guess call it a bachelor, but, like, Women who have not been in a committed relationship with who I just end up meeting on dating apps or meeting on, you know, in person and hit it all. But like I've learned things from different women that I was like, I would not learn if I just read a book or just watched yeah. a movie. Like, I say I say that it depends on the person though, because there's women that prefer from the back versus missionary. Yeah. Like and and it's it's crazy, but like there's there's women like, you know, a lot of what you see on social media, women don't prefer missionary. Yeah, like a lot of what you see, women don't prefer missionary. But there's there's articles that tell you missionary is is the most the orgasmic yeah. positions, and yeah, some women some women do prefer it. It did. It, it really comes down to well, going back to as far as like body count. Like at the end of the day, if I'm talking to one person, we're committed. Your body count does not matter. Like I would like to teach me something new, but your body count does not matter. I don't care. And somebody will probably put in the comment, "What well, was fifty? I don't care." I don't care. Cause what if I had fifty? You'd be like, "Oh, I look at you. Like, get over yourselves. Body count don't matter. It doesn't matter at the end of the day when you get married to somebody. It does not matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Especially like if they don't have like kids or anything like that. Like, it's literally just like, oh, yeah, I'm clean. I just like to have sex. Oh, cool. Like, how long do you have sex? Probably one or two partners a year. Oh, okay. How see how that sound compared to like? That does okay. I guess when you break it down, like yes, yeah, one or two a year. Yeah, they've been they've been hooking up since twenty three. Since twenty, yeah, yeah. 
one in January, oh, the next one's in October. Like it just the guys you're talking to, they thought it would be something that didn't work out. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and like, then over time too. I'm I don't know, I'm one of those depending on it depends on age and time we are now, and that's why we ask the question of body count. Like body count matters and we and we give you like, you know, numbers per the age you are, but like body count and and I'm I'm one of those that Body count does matter to me, you know, at a certain number. Um, above a certain number per your age, it just kind of gives me, like, I was having sex with five to seven guys every three months type vibe, you know? Like, there's numbers that are too big for the age you are per, you know, years that you've been fucking. Right, but like at the end of the day, that person's a person that like matches you with everything. This person, she's a gamer. She talks there. She supports you every single way. She's sitting there. She gonna game with you. Y'all doing the streaming together. Y'all doing all. Okay, so she, she, so she's, not, she's yes. not a mother, but she's taking care. Like she's helping out with the kids. She's I'll not say yes to that. Die. I'll say yes to that. Right. I'll uh -huh. say I won't care about your body count in the aspect of you meet all these other boxes. Yeah. That's that's the only way that it, yeah. then, then it doesn't matter. Like that girl, like that's the perfect girl for you, for you. And yeah. she hates everything, all things, all things that you're like, dude. She had twenty guys in like three years. So like that's as long as she, as long as like my biggest aspect for me, um, and you know, because especially because like I'm divorced, you know, yeah. like having been the loyal person in a relationship, like. Having been married seven years in in loyalty, yeah, my biggest thing is loyalty. So yeah. I won't care about your body count if you're loyal. Loyal, yeah, yeah. See, so <laughs> I was like, if I was saying, like, I think we get too focused on that. And that guy you kind of mentioned there, as far as the cleaning aspect goes, I'm gonna be cleaning with my house. I'm gonna be cleaning. Clean. Yeah, like, 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 there's no way you sitting here at home like, like, oh man, I, I just got work. You need to go clean the dishes. No, f that. I'm cleaning. You sit down, get off your feet. Like you've been working all day long too. Like I got you, man. I'm not gonna see, and I think that that's traditional. You know, traditionally the guy is telling you like sit down, relax. Da, da, da. I'm not gonna tell you to sit down and relax. You go do that. You know, like don't worry about what's what needs to get done because it'll get done. Right. You know, that's that's just where I'm at. With from it. from experience, I know some women love to hear. That like, right? Oh, he got it. Is that words of affirmation? That that acts of service that says like, "Babe, I got you. Don't worry about it." Yeah. And then like, just go get the job done. Like, you rest, relax, enjoy your show. I got you. Like, how many times do you do that though? As far as like, I've never how, been in a relationship. But, I'm gonna do that. See, and that's but that's the, that's what I think creates that TikTok right yeah. there, right? That's what for for men it's like it's a it's given that we expect women to come in every day. Anytime something needs cleaning, oh, she'll do it. Yeah, but that's, you know, and that's a traditional mindset. Though. That's that is a traditional mindset, and I think that's more like modernly. It's yeah. not. It's not communi It doesn't get communicated. It does. That that like men don't communicate that enough modernly. That hey, I'll I'll get it. You know, right. like but even if we there's some men because I know like uh, you know Phoenix he he clean yeah so he's to me he's one of those that be like you know shouldn't. To, like if on, on that aspect, shouldn't have to say it's gonna get clean. Right. Just know it will. It'll be done. Like also, it's your place too. You're living that place. Let's say y'all living together. This is your place too. I don't live in a dirty house. Like right. I don't expect you to clean everything. Like it's, I made. Otherwise, if if it is and that's not something that you're okay with as a woman, then leave that man. Yeah. Like, if he's going dirty your place, get out of there. Yeah. Get yeah. If he's if he's not clean enough for you, like. If you know, it's it's a thing of toleration. You you learn. You have to learn your people, right? Mm -hmm. You got to learn. Uh, do they do things as quick as I want them to, or do they not? And then, at the same sense of that, that's what I was saying by right. it's, it's a problem with modern relationships because people aren't accepting enough. Right. People want other people like as a as a woman or as a man. It's believed that we want the woman to be submissive. What does submissive mean? Does that mean do do as we say? Does she walked ten feet behind me everywhere I go. You know, like what is what is the missive? You right. know, as a as a man, it's for me. You submitting to me means if I come in from work and I'm playing the game and the kids are laughing and playing with their toys and nobody nobody is hurt or needs nothing. Everything's provided for. Mm -hmm. I'm cool to play play for a little bit, and you're not getting bothered. No, nobody's getting nobody's getting stressed to do nothing. You know, mm -hmm. that's that to me is. Cool. As a as a woman, 
it's it's believed that you come in and you're supposed to be uh, the, the housemaid. The like, housemaid, yeah, and like that's just crazy. that's a mindset that we have to break. Break as which, a new modern. That's a big which, fix for modern thing. Yes, yeah, so that, that's crazy to me. I'm like that's crazy, but then I just say, oh, that's forgot. That's the traditional mindset that freaking men are taught. Like. Cause think about like if you talk to your dad or your great your granddad, so like they're like, "What women need to do this? Women need to do all this." Do this. Yep. They tell you, yep. telling this, and you're like, "Okay, she's doing all that. Who's like? I'm not making enough income to bring in like to take care of like you know you, me, and two of the kids." That was like, the thing back then. Back though. then, yeah, the, the men were break, breaking the income. Yeah, like, yeah. Now it's hard to break the income just for one person unless you are you know hitting six figures. Left the right, and you're yeah. seven years old. And you have six figures. Like that's where it is nowadays. Like people who have the most money are older. Right. Like younger men, we don't have that. So I'm gonna like expect my significant other to also work too. So which means if I get home before her, I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to take yeah. care of the kid. I'm gonna take yeah. the baby up and put him down to sleep. I'm going to do things to make sure that she also has how to relax too. And hopefully it's reciprocated both ways, where we're both going back and forth. It's yeah. not just you definitely want to make it like. Modern day, and you you make a schedule, you know. Like mm -hmm. uh, I used to, I used to have a little schedule, you know. And then you know, there's life that happens and loopholes that go into things. But you know, it's it's uh, communication is like the biggest key, and social media is giving us accessibility. So we need to change some of these like modern, or we need to change these some of these traditional, traditional mindsets for modern dating because. Do you that, agree with him? No, you don't. Like. Like the mindset that some men have about dating, because to me, I'm like, he's not wrong. I think men do have that mindset. Like we, we are. That's that's it. That's the problem. Is like, yeah, a lot of men do have that mindset, and it's projected out to social mm -hmm. media that you know you have to be, you got to clean, and like if I'm paying 100 percent of the bills, you got to do everything I say. Right. You know, like, and that's the, it. The only person I feel like the people who can say that are like the top one percent. Like Jeff Bezos can get away with that. Like I feel like there's there's there is there has to be like top like somebody they even got a divorce. True, <laughs> true. Like people who like if you're making multi millions of dollars, you can say that and get away with like, well, I want her to be at home and do all this stuff. Like, okay, cool, because you are the one who's like the NFL yeah. athletes. Like yeah. they they're making multi millions of dollars. Their girls are usually sitting like if you yeah if, if you follow their wives on TV or Instagram stuff like that, they're they're usually like hairdressers or like physical trainers and stuff like that. They're not really like. They're doing jobs where, like, if they don't make make money, they're doing okay because right. the significant other is bringing a lot of money in. That so in that aspect, right, where you are the you are six foot six figure, you know, you can you can have that expectation of like, yeah, she's got to do one hundred percent of the cleaning because I do one hundred percent of the working, you know, like then it's right. okay. You do one hundred percent of the cleaning because I do one hundred percent of the working. Um, as far as like the children, children care and like, or child care, like as far as that goes though, that's always 50-50. Right, but like, like, get a nanny. Yeah, and you get a nanny. Or you get a nanny, and, and, and then y'all 33, 33. And that like, changes the dynamic too, because mm -hmm. the nanny can do some stuff that you're like, wait a minute, hold on. Because like, I read a book about divorce, and nannies sometimes get involved into mm -hmm. the divorce situation. Um, but the, to say like, he like, men's goals are unrealistic, but also you're talking about the average guy. The average guy should not have that mindset because we're not bringing in money like that. Those women who are looking for that dude and he was like, I can name 10 guys who are six foot tall making six figures. They're going to find guys who think like that, who like, you're going to do everything. I'm going to come home and sit down relax because I'm bringing the bread. Those, as a matter of fact, the, the, the men that he's talking about are the women or the men that those women are looking for. Yeah, that literally just hit me. Yeah, the men that he is talking about are the men that those women who are looking for that six foot dude who making you know six figures. Their mindset is gonna be similar to that. Yep, their mindset is gonna be similar to that because one, they probably got got brought into wealth, so they saw their father do the same thing, so they don't know any better. They wasn't taught differently, or they're multi millionaires through a sports and like that. And they're like, well, I'll just take care of everything. Baby, you just sit at home and you know take care of the housework and everything like yeah. that. Like, yeah, like. And that you, makes perfect sense. And yep. you are going to find, like, Brittany Mahomes, she does her own stuff, too. Like, she, I think she's a physical trainer, hairdresser, and then she owns, like, the Kansas City Current. But also, Patrick Mahomes is a half a, bil half a billionaire. So, therefore, the money that comes into her household, she can use it to invest in other things. Like, she's not sitting around doing stuff, like, just doing nothing. But there's go go on Instagram. Go on um, social media. We know we just talking about don't. Take social media with a grain of salt. But go watch. Go find those athletes. Then go find the significant others and see what they do. Just, just go do that.
if you want to go deep into that rabbit hole. Because it is a rabbit hole. All right, so this next video here is by What's Up Cuz Podcast. And it has, see what this lady's talking about here, but here we go. Always packed. That's just the way it is. Well, I think the super modern way is whoever is asking and making the plan for the date is the one paying. Being raised, men should pay for your date. I still was raised of like, what you should offer. Because you don't want to seem like you're taking advantage of somebody. Of course. Somebody. Absolutely. And I agree with yes. that too. Not just being expected. And I all do. my guy friends, that's what they say. They're like, we just want the offer. We want to pay. We mm -hmm. want to treat. They're like, but we notice when girls don't even offer. And I could agree to that. It's also a way of saying, hmm, what type of person is this? And that first date is what's going to show you what type of person you're getting yourself into. Offering is mm -hmm. always a good gesture, but in my household, the boys pay. <laughs> I like how she made sure to put the hand in. <laughs> the look that she added on the internet too. But in my household. <laughs> the look that she added on the back of that. I love Man. Erica, by the way. She has a podcast called Shooters Gotta Shoot. She's a comedian. Um, really good podcast I've been listening to. I came across her. I don't know how, but like really good podcast. She's like six foot I think and she talked about like how hard it is to date guys and she's like yeah cuz you know I'm, I'm tall I stand out yeah. and um but like then she's like you know what I got tired of guys coming up to me she's like because she played college basketball I think or volleyball no basketball and um nobody ever approached her nobody ever approached her like she was like I'm so busy in school and stuff like that so she was like you know what screw this I'm gonna start approaching guys and that's what we get the shooters gotta shoot podcast because she's like how do guys approach girls and stuff like that mm. but um the pay thing I, modern day dating, I always tell the guys to always pay. So I always pay at first day. If I do the invite, I am paying for you. Yeah. Um, even if I get invited, I, I still it. try to pay, which yeah. I've had this happen most of the time with girls like, no, 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 you're not paying. And I'm like, I try to put my card out at the register, put your card down. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool, fine. Yeah. It's, it's still hard for me not to not to try to, I guess the offer it is, but I even like, I sometimes don't even think that like, Cause I watched another TikTok where the girl's like, if I offer to pay and he doesn't stop me, then I'm not asking him on a second date. Or I'm not if he asks on a second date, I'm not doing it. And like I don't like that game. And so to me, it's still like, yeah, no, it's the most backward no, thing. No, yeah. And like so, she said, she literally said, I'm like, I'm on the early episode of Nerdy Dating. We, we I think me and Kalisa talked about this, where she was like, if I she said, if I say I want to pay and he doesn't stop me. I'm not taking it on the second date. I got the ick. I was like, which which date is that that she's offering to pay for? You know, like that's that's where right. it comes at. Like if if we go on a first date and you offer to pay, then no, that's not a thing. Like yeah. no, nah, I'll pay. That's right. that's weird. Like that, I I never accept you paying for the first date. Nah, that's weird. Cause like then I then I'd understand. Like I don't know. It's it depends. Cause I I have had a first date paid for before, so I, I can't say that. But it is weird. Like. Um, and I've had like girls take me out on dates before too, you know, but I've never gotten wooed, you know, <laughs> I, I've never gotten like men are expected to do the flowers, treatment, car, door, all that yeah. wooing. Women do not woo men. They'll, they'll take a man out, they'll pay for dinner, but he still drives. Um, you know, he still, he still is doing the door opening, right. all that, you know, but and I think like I'd never let my girl open the door for me anyway. Yeah, I try to race, I try to race girls to do like, nope, <laughs> not doing this. <laughs> like, I'm I'm a little taller, so I only yeah. I only gotta step a certain way, so But I do like what Erica said, like those who did the invite, if you if a girl's gonna invite a guy out, if he if you're like I'm inviting you out, okay, mm -hmm. cool. If he does offer to pay, you can say no, I got you, don't worry about this. That's fine. Just be mindful that he is still hopefully Hopefully that he will try to offer to pay even though you did the invite. I think that's fine. All right, let's go to the next one here She said in my house <laughs> in my house guy, pay. Pay. <laughs> Like what well, dang let's See what this one is and this is from Hen Hendrix Soren she's going off right now all right, here we go. Slip it on the table. Rewind his back. You guys made it so embarrassing for men to not pay for a meal or a date or whatever that now every time I go out, when it's my turn to pay, I just slip my card to him beforehand. Slip it on the table, give it to him in the car, so it looks like he's paying for it because he can't be caught not paying for me. Then people will judge him. It's your guys' fault, okay? 
Why can't I just be an independent woman who pays for things? Uh, you can. You guys made it so embarrassing. For you can't be an independent woman who pays for things. Or a date or whatever. Like, just don't don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what other people think. If you're worried about what other people think about your relationship and what people what people are gonna you say about you doing stuff, you can't say that in a modern sense now. But to tell somebody to not think about what others others think and social media exists, like you can't say that. But like, if you know what the truth, you know your truth. Your truth gonna speak itself. So yeah, people don't have that fortitude. Like back then, it was like it was branded what other people thought of you. If if it was really that big of a, a news, it yeah. was out there. Yeah. But like nowadays, like people don't have that fortitude to not care about what social media thinks or what people think about them in an the aspect of like. You go into a coffee shop and you know, oh, that's a uh, two caramel lattes, da da da, foam, and the woman pays for you and the man. Like, who cares what anybody in that line thinks or is, is saying? Yeah, you know, you guys got your caramel lattes in your relationship and you leave. Like, yeah. Um, but that's not a normal mindset anymore in the modern day. Modern day is, you know, well, if I if I was to be, a lot of people think that they're on TV. 24 seven. Right. And so if they're, you know, if they're making a Snapchat or walking and, you know, that's how they, that's how they act is if somebody's going to TMZ them because the woman paid for them. And that's, that's the mindset that people live in. That's, that's just something, I don't know when it got attached, but modernly it got attached that social media creates and sets the standards for how real world should be. But like with with that being said, it's that if that that little thing, something as minuscule as her going to pay, y'all been dating mm -hmm. six months, babe, I got you today. Here, sit back, I'm paying for this. Little car. If, if that little car is what you guys are afraid of, imagine what else you won't do in your relationship because you're afraid of people looking Social at you. Standards. Like it's yep. to me. If you know your truth, you know that, hey, this dude's a good guy. I want to treat him. Treat him. Nobody cares if you buy a gift for him. You bought a gift for your man. Nobody going to care about that. Nobody going to say, oh, he's she bought a gift. You spent money? You spent money on that gift, didn't you? You bought it to him, gave it to him. You spent money on a PS5 and gave it to him. You spent money on that. You bought, he didn't buy it himself. Nobody going to judge him. Oh, he got a PS5 from his girlfriend. This, dude, this man ain't worth anything. Like, no. no and, and that's the funny thing, too, though, is I think women more so um don't do that like the gift given and it's not publicized because like it's it's set as the social standard is you'll get made fun of you know you bought a, you bought him a ps5 girl he finna play you he only with you for that ps5 that's that's the standard that's that's what's gonna come from it women women get taken out on dates and you know it's it's the idea of like you take a girl out and she's taking pictures of just the drinks but not you yeah you know so, like, I think, I don't know, social media is just an infection to uh, modern dating, but, like, it takes, it's going to take uh, the right daters and suitors uh, consistently flowing through it to cure it. Right. And I just think, another thing is don't surround yourself around negativity. Do not worry about what people are saying in your comments. Because yeah. those comments, there are people who are in comments, really go to comments just to bring you down because they ain't doing anything good in their life. Yep. So do not worry about what other people are thinking. Live your life, speak your truth, be happy. Don't ignore the negativity surrounding yourself around positivity. You see, Some people don't like happy relationships. They don't. So they don't. Anything to bring, to yours bring down. that one down. Yep. Their relationship is miserable. Yep. So if my relationship is going to be miserable, then his relationship will be miserable. We ain't going to be happy. Nah, this, this, he seen, ain't going to be over here happy. And, and see, that's another thing, too. I've seen a lot of like modern relationships have traditional uh, anchors that damage their relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So the traditional anchors being the, like the, the spouse's parents yeah you know like there's there's family members that can make your relationship not work right you know because modern technology allows that that communication and just it's i don't know it's it's a it's a lot of things of like your happiness is what you should be focused on yeah you your you and your spouse's happiness not um not like your spouses having mothers, this with the, the mothers and the yeah, like, yeah, 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 like I, those are those are important, but it's like those are not what creates the, your relationship. relationship. Yes, yeah. yes, 110 percent. Right, let's see what else we got here. You want to do two more? 
Yeah, I'm with it. Okay. Let's go back in my grandfather's day. I could do the 44 minute video. And then we probably do that one. It's two minutes. And then maybe this one. Or no, I think she has a point. So let's talk about it. Listen to her. All right. Here we go. This is from How to. This is from How to Beast. So let's see what he got to say. Back in my grandfather's time, when a man and a woman dated, they had a very serious intention to perhaps get married and, and start a family, and that was the priority. And obviously, in today's society, hookup culture has become glorified through movies, music, through all. I'm at each like a video culture. rapper. Most men buy into this, and movie. we want to be able to date a bunch of different women. That gives us validation, makes us feel more masculine and good about ourselves. And women also now have become liberated to an extent, and they like to play the field as well. And a lot of guys are big and they don't like this but again this is the reality the point is the world has changed and evolved and your dating strategies also need to change and evolve or not then don't be bitter and mad about it I don't know where he was going with that I'm not sure what it, yeah I was trying to figure that too because he started out with you know back in my grandfather's time the the intentions were pure for an end you know for yeah. an end to be all together and then he went to, you know, I guess his point was like dating standards have changed. So you need to change. You too. need to accept that and change your dating strategies or just accept that you may be alone. Cause <laughs> Cause you're not gonna change. You don't yeah. change. He's like, if guys, you have a problem with women having a body count higher like a, if you have a problem with women having a body count, you may end up alone because women are more liberated now and that's a common thing. Right. So yeah. Like once again, you're looking for the perfect person for you. And I feel like saying the perfect person, you look for the best person for you. I think perfect just sounds, it makes a negative connotation about it. It does. Yeah. And then you look for every, every detail. little thing. And Can't that's what I mean checks. by being yeah. acceptable. Like, yeah. you, have to, you have to accept certain things. things. You know, like for me, I'll accept that um, I can't game all the time because, like, I got to do things. Like, we got to do things together and you want some of my attention. Like, I'll accept watching movies with you. I'll accept... You know, laying and cuddling through nights and not mm -hmm. having sex at three in the morning mm -hmm. or getting a turkey sandwich when I asked for it. You right. Know? I don't, I'll accept those things, you know. Um, but then you also have to be accepting of certain things as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's just how relationships work. All right. Let's, let's get that dude. I'm not sure what he was going for with that, but <laughs> let's go. I mean, he made a good point. Oh. If you want, if you want to date in this new age, you need to adjust your strategies to dating in this new age. Yeah. Let's go with this one. Or if you want to be married in this, if you want to, if you want to end up getting Damn married. Man. Modern men are not interested in traditional women, and this is by Cruise Season. And let's see what he has to say. I think they just traditional staying home and you know providing for the kids, cooking for me, you know. Uh, Catering to every aspect of me and not working to, towards more goals for themselves, I can't. I can't do that because I want you to find goals or find another happiness than me. When I'm wherever I'm not here, I want you to find another passion that makes you happy. Because if I'm not there and you don't have no other happiness, it's it's, it's not going to be benefit you or the kids or anything else. So no, I can't. No, traditional is not for me. We both need to be striving towards goals, have goals, something that makes you happy besides me. That's, okay. That's okay. Because when I when you read that at first, I was like, "Why are we not interested in a traditional yeah. woman?" Yeah, traditional staying up. Yeah, no. That, okay. Yeah. That makes perfect sense, sense. though. Yeah, I I'll agree with that. Um, Most have their own interests, have their own things, yeah. their own goals they're reaching for. Yeah. That's and that's what I was saying uh, earlier when I was like, you know, if if me playing my game and the kids aren't bothered or anything, then. You know, you we should be we should both be fine because that means you can do whatever you want to do at this time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to go take a nap, reach a goal and take that nap. You know, if you wanna, if you if you wanna uh, work on your business because you're you know, I believe in entrepreneurship. That's right. that's the success success in life. Like, right. do that. You know, further yourself. Read that book. Finish that book. Whatever it is you want to do for yourself, do that. Do that. You know. There's two more videos because I'm really not gonna play the ones. I, uh, these two I do want to talk about real quick, and we'll get into that here in a moment. All right, we're gonna do two more videos here, and we're about to call it a day. So let's see here. 
This one is from I Can Vibe With Y'all Podcast. Everybody has a podcast nowadays. Yeah. Um, Women? That's the only way to get all the mindsets out there, though. Like, right. like if we don't, if we don't start changing, some do people need to speak because if we don't change the narrative, nobody will. True. So do guys, do you guys approach women? women? <laughs> Look at them, they're like, no. Nope. I'm half and half. If it's like a girl, I think I would be interested in. I have no problem approaching her. I'm not against approaching women. However, it does become a numbers game, mm -hmm. and it's exhausting. Like I don't want to be out. Approaching 50 different girls. Okay, wait, no man should be like approaching every girl at the club. Like, that's yeah, but it's a number of the only ones that he's interested in. What? <laughs> Do you guys approach women? <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> oh, no, no, all the ones he's interested in. <laughs> well, yeah, like, do you do the approaching? Every girl he sees. Well, how many? How many women do you approach in the club? At a, in the in the same club? Do you approach multiple women in the same club? Because if one says yes, aren't you with that one for the evening? Most likely, right? You know, so. But then, yeah, it becomes it becomes a numbers game. If one says no, do you do a second approach in the club? You you do because like she don't want to dance with you or she don't want to be interested. In you, you go to the next person. Mm -hmm. Just like it's same it's same thing as. That right there is like the same thing as online dating. Like it's a numbers game. It's too many. Like, yeah. well, dude, yeah. you, your 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 logic behind that wasn't the best. He yes and no. He's just, he's tired. Approaching in person can be exhausting because you gotta get ready to be rejected if she's gonna say no to you. Rejection's not fun. Nobody likes to be rejected. So you have to be able to be like, okay, well, she said no. Take that L, walk away. You know, because yeah. you, you're taking that L live right there. Yep. Interaction, like, yep. what do you mean? Like, okay, like, and don't do the whole as a guy. Don't be whining. Like, she don't want to dance with you. What do you mean you want to dance with me? I mean, get over yourself. Just walk away. <laughs> Just walk away. Like, okay, thank you. No, thank you for your time. Thank you for you know for the conversation. And I'm gonna go. Like, another thing when approaching a girl, don't approach her like from behind her back. Like, she should see you coming. At least. Not directly, like, but like maybe from an angle, like you're approaching her, like she can see you, like yeah, at the corner of your eye, yeah, like she's looking over, like, oh, okay, this dude's coming here. Coming head on can be a little more like abrasive, like, oh shoot, this dude is coming over me, coming over to me like that. And don't come to the back, and that's when you get called creepy. Like, hey, how you doing? Why are you putting your hand on my shoulder? Why are you behind me? Like, yeah. that's creepy. Like, no, you want to come at her from an angle where she can at least see at the corner of her eye. Um, and when she says no, just like, Thank you for your time. I appreciate you and walk away. Don't sit there and be like, well, okay. And pout, like, no. That, that devalues you as a guy, yeah. to be honest. Pouting devalues you as a guy. It makes you look less than. You do not want to do that. Another thing to add to that, if she says yes and you guys hit it off, don't linger. A lot of guys linger. Like They'll sit there and they hit it off and like, okay, this is going good. And then nobody saying anything. You're just sitting there like, huh. I guess I can believe now. Like, don't linger. Like, make it peace. Have a conversation. You bar a drink kind of thing. Like, hey, my friend's over here. You want to come over? Or you want to go to the dance floor? Can I come over and get you up for a dance? Then walk away. Like, you don't have to linger because lingering just makes it look more awkward. It's the more awkwardness of the situation. Like, well, I just went over there. I just stand there. Yeah. So, yeah. that's the thing about approaching. And it can be exhausting because you, you got to get the courage to say, like, all right, let me go talk to her. Let me go say something to her and see what happens. So, I do... I do see we're like fifty women, but fifty women every time. Dude. All right. No, I mean I think I think he was saying like fifty women. Yeah, like was he saying within a day or I think there was a time. I yeah. Think there was a good time lapse in between there that he uh, he was saying fifty women approached. But like, I I will always be a fan of uh, or like a champion to like my bro going to approach a girl like at any time. You know, if there's some if there's a person you're interested in you should go approach them because you know who knows what could happen from there all right let's go to the last video i actually want to pull up here and this is from tonight's conversation and it's another podcast for my wife to be so here I would we go. love for my wife to be at home all day and she just does what I said. Are you married? I love that. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 
you you went on that slide next time. Can you repeat that? No, I was going to say, everyone's giving their opinions as if they're very, as if they're unit. They're not that. You can't speak on that. I had such an opinion on marriage before I was married. And once you're actually legally married, it's changed. It's changed. Like, it's, she was married. I didn't say it humbled me. He said that it humbled me in my life. That's it for me. Oh, that's very interesting. So, uh, hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me let, me say this. let me say this. I want to go back. You said if you had the preference. Yeah. I want you to say what you said again, and then if I had the preference, I would prefer to have full control over my wife. Oh God! Full control over my wife. Let them talk, though. I would like to have full control. Just me as a person, I like having full control of all of my situation. Hundred percent. So, so if it was my preference, I would prefer I to control entirely. But I know it's not realistic, and I also know it's not right. That's the traditional part of me that I have to correct because the modernist in me is telling me that, hey, listen, she can do everything that you can do. You need to help her embrace those roles. So now as me getting into my modernist, I'm like, yo, listen, I, t I want you to do this. Now I'll tell you that I think you should do this. But if you do that, I'm not going to shame or scorn you for it or break up with you That's for it or be, or be crazy, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on what it is. But it's, uh, he settled his mindset in terms of what he wants in the life, but he has to adapt to the times, but the yeah. times are just influenced by social media. Yep. The, the, the woman you wanted, you could have found 40 years ago. But because the, the woman has involved into this, you know, hyper-masculine feminine. Wow. Oh my gosh. That, this podcast that's, is, this is kind of... That right there is what I'm talking about. And and that's what he was, that's what he can point at too. You know, the, the modern... Times have created that mindset I would love for women. For my wife to be um, at home all like, day and but the the way she talks, the way she like, I ain't nothing. I'm me ever. Every everybody needs to been been humbled or at least still humble in some sense. Like if you, that's that's one of those like, and that's why he says she's been married. You know, yeah. she didn't stay married. She she been married. <laughs> like I don't know. It's you. There's there's mindsets that are just like inflated and conceited where where you're saying like it's bad for guys to pout you know you get turned down you should walk away with dignity don't be like me me there's women that are like Shh, if you don't come up to me then Shh. if you're not buying every meal yeah you know if you're not opening the car door then Shh. yeah like there, there's women that are in that mindset of like step on you. Yeah, and those guys shouldn't guys shouldn't date women who are like that. I think guys should stay away from those women because those that's not that's not healthy traits. As far as this guy's situation, there's a lot that happened here. You got one of the lady who's like, "Oh, you been married?" He said, "No." So she was like already knew like that's not gonna fly today. Like unless he. But he is, was already getting to that. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. trying to get to it, but they kept cutting him off. Yeah. Like now, if this, I don't know to do income. Maybe he is you no know, like multi millionaire. That's the case. Once again, we talked about earlier. He has the luxury of having being, that preference. Of, yeah. yeah, I love a girl yeah. who like because there's um, Courtney Ryan has a video where a girl like a bunch of girls on there come on and like I will I want to be a stay at home mom. I don't want to do anything else. I want to do I want to have a three hundred thousand dollar income mm -hmm. kind of thing. And Courtney's like, what age are you looking for these guys? Well, it can be between twenty seven and thirty five. And Courtney was like, you know what the likelihood of a man making three hundred thousand dollars at twenty seven thirty five is? And they was like, what? Like. Five percent less than that. You know the likelihood of a man making forty nine thousand dollars at the age of twenty seven thirty five. Majority of men, the average man makes forty nine thousand dollars at the age of like thirty. Mm. So like your real your ideal of what you want is ridiculously high. This dude, if he's making no NFL money or basketball money or MLB money, I don't know. He doesn't like an athlete or anything like that. Or somebody he could be a. a a rapper or something like that who mm. but then again like if he's a not rap, I should say rapper an artist um he could be an artist like if, if that's the case but like I don't know who he is like I didn't look at him like yeah. oh look little Weezy <laughs> like yeah, Drake yeah, like yeah. those guys can say that kind of stuff and be you know and get away with it yeah. he probably can't he knows that he knows the hair you know I know she need to do what she want to do but the other guy like that's a similar mindset it's not something he's like social media has changed. It wasn't social media. It's a women's rights movement. It's the fact that women can do what they want to do. It's the fact that like women are human too, and they can live lives just like we can live our lives. Times have changed. 
And because of that, income and stuff raising has changed as well, where you can't do everything. You can do everything by yourself, but it'd be a lot harder to do everything by yourself. Like, so if you want to have a wedding or have a family and have a wife and stuff like that who doesn't do anything, as a provider, you need to make X amount of money to do it. Because if you're not if not providing, you're like, hey baby, the life's gonna be cut off this week. And she's sitting on her butt like I'm doing everything you ask. That's where it's like, like, like you're not hitting as a part of like communication. You're not hitting your part of the deal. Right. Your deal. You said you're gonna provide for everything. And I sit at home and I do anything. How I'm gonna live, I to live my life when the lights might not be paid this week. We're sitting in the dark for the next two weeks because you can't make money. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's not a silly mindset. It's like to me, that dude who's like that's a silly mindset for him. Like I'm okay with having a modern day woman. It's because like that dude like does he have a modern day? Does he have a traditional woman? Probably doesn't. That dude girl is probably out working just like he is, probably doing things just like he is, and he's not selling, unless he don't think he is. You know, it just to me, it just seems like this guy, the other guy that really hyped, harping on him for saying that, which the traditional mindset in him was like, yeah, I do want a lady who sits at home all day, but it's not feasible because today's modern time, not social media, just the world we live in today, that's not a feasible thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it I mean, is. Social but, media is a big anchor to that, though. You know, like, like without if we if we extracted social media um and pulled away its ability to like alter mindsets you know in a sense or just pull the social media away for a little bit like i think dating would have um like if you could only use social media to communicate with people that you met traditionally okay you know type thing like it, it took away you seeing other people's mindsets projected out into the world it took away the the channels that are showing you that men only want this type of thing in women and there's no men that will accept this of a woman. You know, yeah. like, takes all that away. And you're not seeing that every six months, every three weeks. Because every two weeks we hear about 50-50 in a relationship. Yeah. And how if a relationship's not 50-50, then it's not a relationship. To or, me, it is be 100-100. Like, both people go all in. 50-50 means you're doing something half. I mean, but Michelle but Obama I, said something about it. Like, yeah. when she was talking about marriage, she was like, she was like, I think she said they've been married like 30 years or something like that. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, sometimes it's 70-30. Sometimes it's 30 Yeah, the like, truth, it does You flip. know, and, and that's, that's it. Like, when I yeah. sat there, when I, cause, you know, I've been married, it, and that's what it was, is sometimes, like, not every day you're going to be like, oh, I'm, super wooed in love with this person but like you know at the end of the day like you chose this person this is that's yeah that was that was my commitment and i know why yeah because yeah like tuesday and this is this is like the modern thinking to me right like tuesday and speaking for my woman tuesday you scrolled and you saw somebody you were more interested they look oh my god they just all right but three months later you know like what is what is that gonna be? Is that is that what we acting on? Like right. for me personally, like, like I scroll and see a supermodel, it's like, oh, she looks good, cool. But I chose, you know, right like so. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like if you if you're gonna leave somebody over just the fact you saw somebody's picture on Instagram mm-hmm. or Facebook, like then your relationship wasn't wasn't gonna last. Yeah, anyway. wasn't gonna last. Yeah. Like yeah. you didn't trust that person, but like. Those the, everybody in this group who talked over him and let him be, and that guy who's like, that's a you're you're settling. That's not a seller's mindset. He can still find, like the other girl, like, he can still he can find, find a girl out there who can have that traditional mindset. I talked to a few women who's like, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not that spot in my life where I can provide for you and me and a kid. I know women <laughs> I know women that will work. They they do work. And they're like, they work. They come home, uh, cook. They might not clean up instantly, but they mm-hmm. come home, cook. I know women that are like, yeah, if... if you were to say that I didn't have to work, then yeah, I'd have no problem cooking and cleaning. Yeah. You know, but I'll still work right. if, if need be. Like, you know, but I know women that are all for being traditional and, you know, submissive and all that, in a sense, and they'll take you out. Yeah. Like it, it exists. Like, but that's why I'm like, social media is bad because it creates this stigma uh mindsets that people still believe traditional only works works like only traditional works like right. and no everybody like if they would let him finish his sentence i think a lot of people believe in traditional things but they know modern things alter that so there's right twists and turns you have to add in like that like that other guy was saying you know if, if you don't like the new age dating then and you don't want to change your strategy then don't be bitter yeah don't be mad don't be mad you know? 
Yeah, that's good. Good round out there. Anything else? No, nah, I mean, those are the fixes. Those are the problems, pros and cons to modern dating. Like, yeah, we pretty much hit up on everything here. Like, it's yeah, that that was that, that one guy though. Real quick, cause I thought I saved it, but I guess I didn't. Let me see, cause this dude said some crap on on TikTok. That I was like, oh, I'm gonna fight this guy, and I, would, and I really want to play it. One last, so one last video, guys. And then I've been saying one last video. And everybody's like, this guy keeps saying one last video, and he's not closing it out. Why? So many videos. I seen this video. Uh, it's like Lamp, Ian, Ian Thibault. Um, you know, uh, Philip, Philip Hubman. Uh, no, nah, he's not the same dude. Anyway, he's a comedian, and he was sitting in a car, and she's like, "When we finna go out?" He was like, "Can't." He was like, "We live in Atlanta, don't we?" She was like, yeah. He was like, he was like, smoke, don't you? Drink, don't you? Don't be about there, ain't we? And like, uh, but it was just, he was just asking her like, and he started breaking it down at the end. He's like, he's like, because you might not even be that into me. So he's like, why would I, why would I, uh, he's like, I'm broke. You know, he's like, why would I take time to uh, take you out on a fancy date or like take you out on a date when we could, we could just link up and do what we, do what we like to do. Like we both like to smoke and drink. <laughs> and you know right like why 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 would i have to go do all that and you might not like me so he's like uh and i started and i was just watching i'm just cracking up i'm like yo that's a perfect point like Still don't have so he said he said you know uh i'm not a scammer he was like i ain't get money like that he was like if i was do you think i'd only want to be with you mm. and it's like that brings the question like do do if I'm getting six figures, do I expect only one woman to want to be with me? Do I have to accept only one woman want to be with me? No. You know, like, right. and that's that's a thing of modern dating now too. Like, do you mean like as an acceptance? Like, like are you talking about like you don't want to be solo? You want to be monogamous? You want to be like, because it's, it, it's the way take that great right, take that society is where like the more income you have, the better, the more. Was it the more income you have, the more financially stable, the more uh, provider you are for mm -hmm. the woman's mindset. So, like as a guy, you have you do have more options. You don't you can say like, well, I don't have to choose this girl. I can choose whoever any girl I want yeah. because. But I think, also, you got to be careful with the gold diggers who are just out for you just for your money. But I think modernly, it's more of a thing to be um, to be like for people who are above six figures, right? Mm -hmm. It's more common to have a Monday Tuesday girl, and then you know. Have a have somebody you hang out with on weekends or type right. of thing like it, it's more common to have more than one. But that's also come down to like that's like when it comes to relationship, establish a relationship though like it can be more common to date around like that. But like when you get establish a relationship, do not do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would you would hope you would hope that that just brings up loyalty. Is like you would hope people just stay loyal and right. do the one v one. But there's one more video I just found. Everyone's like, oh, dating is so hard. Dating sucks nowadays. Like. It sucks because you're entertaining the wrong people and you continue to entertain the wrong people. Why do you think, or in a woman's sense, why do you think they continue to entertain the wrong people? Because a lot of people are not healed and they continue to entertain the people that trigger their insecurities because it's comfortable for them. A lot of times people are just like, it's what's familiar to you. Like, that's what you know. Going from a really toxic relationship into like, dating someone that's actually probably good for you is really hard because you have to make that sh mind shift to like, I, I deserve this. Like, I deserve someone to treat me like I am awesome. Everyone's like, oh, dating is so hard. Dating sucks nowadays. Like, it mm. sucks because you're entertaining the wrong people I and think, you continue to entertain the wrong people. Why do you I think a lot of people uh, heard the word toxic and was like, yes, that's my relationship. And it really wasn't. Right. I think like a lot of people come out of relationships like scarred. And it's like, you know, abusive relationships exist. That yes. is toxic, yes. you know? Um, but, like, in a sense of, like, if the entire relationship was abusive, that's toxic. If there's there's people that have relationships, and if you've, like, experienced, like, you know, um, drug use, like, one of, one of them was on drugs and went through the process of getting better, and you guys stayed together through that type thing, like... If if you made it out of that hole of, of that dark time in the relationship, then you guys came over that bridge and then no, that wasn't toxic. Right. You know, like, but if he didn't just text you every single day 
and you know, then you found out that he posted a meme, that doesn't make the relationship toxic. Yeah, like no. People overuse the word toxic. This is true. So much but now. I do think there is there is something with that what she said though about like like people are quick to move on versus taking a moment to stop and pause and just reflect. Like the moment you get done with a situation ship, you hop back on the apps and start swiping again. Not just, every moment causes for a reflect. This is true. But like as far as like let's say you got done with a relationship, you didn't take time away from that relationship. You just said, Cool, I'm gonna help on the apps and start swiping again. Yeah. Like yeah. Like I think people what people say dating so hard because you also you gotta think about how many people you're walking into that might have baggage. Like you, every person you wanna meet at this point. Now back then people had baggage too. Yeah. And then Chamber, I guess the opportunity to meet more people with baggage has grown bigger. Yeah. Which once again we talked about earlier, like the options are bigger, so healing should, is very important. I told like and I, I'd always said, uh, even while I was married, I was like I was like, if we ever divorce, I'm not I'm not dating again after you. I was like, it doesn't happen because I put so much time into dating and getting here that I never redo that time with somebody else and even attempt that. So it's it's a thing of like, yeah, healing is like super important, mm -hmm. and um, you definitely will come across people that are are not healed. They'll mm -hmm. they'll come into you, talk to you, and they're not healed, you know? Um, as far as what she was saying, what I didn't agree with was when she said, uh, we, or like people go to people who trigger their insecurities, and it's like, because it's comfortable for them, and it's like, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. It is. Like, I, I can see it, right? Like, but. Think about people who date the same type of people with the same similar traits. Yeah. Like, it, it happens. People don't get outside the comfort box. They're like, oh, well, I have this certain type, certain preference. It's not good, but that, that preference constantly gives you headache and heartache. Why you keep going through? Maybe it's time to try something new. So maybe insecurities wasn't the word that she needed to use. Maybe it was like, um, we go to we go to people that trigger our, um, I don't know, it's trigger something else, but... You know, it's not our not our insecurity. Like, like she dates somebody who's like, okay, what to do is like, I'm not 100 percent available. I'm not this. You like, well, I want somebody who's, you know, at least 60 percent available. And he's like, yeah, I'm the 10 percent. Sorry, you're not gonna see me all the time. I travel all the time. What well, then? She like insecurity of maybe she dates somebody who's a cheater. So then she's like, well, if he's not around, I hope he's not doing anything bad. Versus that, it's having seen that that trust at the beginning, like. That's gonna eat it. And I ain't just her. A guy would do the same thing. Where like a girl's like, yeah, I'm a travel nurse. I go all over the place, travel to different cities. And this dude was on with somebody who cheated on her, cheated on him. And he's like, well, I don't know. You're gonna be you no know, loyal in Tennessee, no Nashville. We just started talking a month ago. Like, right. like we we established a relationship before you left. Versus probably waiting until the right, relationship until you came back you and established know, a relationship. Like, yeah. so there's different things you can do with somebody where you're like, oh, this person, you no. Know, loves pets and love dogs and I know dogs trigger my allergies and stuff like that and I keep baiting people all these dog fans and I know for me it just won't work but I keep going back to these women who have mm -hmm. dogs that I know for a fact at the end of the day I'm gonna be dying trying to sleep on her place at night like no like learn from your situations and learn how to grow on it versus just like I'm gonna just go back right in that same pattern she was cute so why not <laughs> as a guy but all right, AP, thank you for being on this episode, man. Appreciate oh. it. Any last thing you want to say to the camera before we head out? Uh, heal yourself. Love yourself. Self-care is important. And always be positive. Keep the negativity away from you. Exactly. And use online dating and social media as a tool. They're not the they're not the preference. They're not the golden standard. It's a tool to find who you want. Still there'll be traditional things that will happen in dating. A guy can take you out on a date after meeting you online. He can take you out, hold the door open, pick up pick up your place is kind of like I wouldn't do that on the first date. Just saying, I would be in a local place where public people are, can't everybody out there, you know, can't trust everybody out there nowadays. But get to know who they are, have them take it out like he can't pay on the first date, but also like don't not as the second or third day, don't hesitate to pay for him. Like it's okay. It's okay. And um yeah, merch, you know what we need to do is merge traditional and modern dating together versus separating the two. Other than that, if you guys have a question you want to ask me, you can send it to me at alizaka nerdy dating at gmail.com. That's alizaka nerdy dating at gmail.com. Also, post a question in the comment section below. And you can also post a question to me on my Instagram, aliz underscore zaka. Other than that, thank you guys so much and keep being awesome. Thank you for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating. I really appreciate it. If there's another episode you want to watch, you can look at it right there. If you want to subscribe to the page and watch more content, it's down here. 
Also, you have a question about dating, you want to put it in the comment section, go ahead and do it. Or you can send me a dating question to my email of alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. That's alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. And I will answer your question on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate you. And keep being awesome.